everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play World of Final Fantasy. Uh, last time, we were on the hunt to complete our collection of baby summons. And we successfully did that, and I'm going to show you exactly how you go about doing so. Okay, so to start with, you need something with Flutter and something with Smash. So, if you can get a... If you get a Copper Gnome and get it to level 10, you will get a... You'll be able to tra transfigurate it into a Mithril Giant. Who, if you go look at his Mirage Board... His first ability is Smash, which removes obstacles through Brute Strength. And you do actually get this guy in this stage, so... Not even a problem. Uh, you will also need something that knows Flutter, and as far as I know, the Floating Eye is the earliest thing that has Flutter. Technically, you can get a Floating Eye in this stage as well, but you have to get it after you've already fluttered over, so it kind of doesn't matter. But, you know. Anyway, you have to go down here. This is at the uh, end of the stage, near the save point, as you can tell. You go over here, and normally, right here, there will be a large boulder blocking your way, and you'll, as soon as you walk over to it, your Mithril Giant will automatically use Smash and knock it into the, knock it off the thingamajigs over there. Then you go over here, and you'll see the flutter symbol, and you'll have to flutter across. Your way over here, and I should warn you, the enemies over here are fairly strong, though not like insanely strong, but I don't know. They, uh, if nothing else, they, well, you're, you're about to see. <laughs> Dude, it's on! Let's make this good. They... Give a lot of experience. Like a lot, a lot. <laughs> so I'm kind of over leveled now. More than I would really like to be, but it wasn't really. Game didn't really give me much of an option. But uh, yeah, either way, if you go over here, there is a treasure chest down there that you can see. Uh, that treasure chest contains a mega potion. Here we go! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, as you saw there, you can technically get those here, but it's kind of a troll because you won't get them after you don't need it anymore. So, you know, that's kind of a thing. But yeah, if you go down there, there's a uh, mega potion in that chest. And if you go back around over this way... all the way down here. But uh, these guys, they just don't leave me alone. Well, that ought to do it. Oh, right. There we go. Make our way down here. Here. And down across here, there are two more chests, and they contain two Mega Ethers and two Mega Phoenixes. So, that's what's in there. Alrighty, let Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah! Oh yeah! So, when you're running around down here, you have a very, very tiny chance. To encounter a baby Ifrit, a baby Shiva, or a baby... What was that thing even called? I can never remember what the third one is called. Of course, I don't super care about it. Uh, Rama? 
assuming. Yeah. But yeah. The little baby Rama gave me the most trouble here. Well, technically, I haven't seen a single baby Shiva. So technically, she's giving me the most trouble, but I'm also not looking for her, so... I don't know. But yeah. I have gotten them all to level 15, though, which means they can all transfigure once, and I did go ahead, as you can see, she's kind of, like, way past that. But I, uh, I did wait so that we could do this on screen, because I thought that would be exciting. Mishiva. So look at that. She looks kind of... I'm going to need a better look at her at some point. But yeah, there's Mishiva. Then... Let's see, we can grab Thunder. And agility. And you can transfigure as well. And he can now transform into Zaphyr, who actually looks pretty badass. I kind of want to use. Like I said, I waited to do this, so I don't I didn't know what any of these guys looked like. I don't know why I clicked on that, wasn't what I meant to do. Okay, but we can go over here. Let's see. Guess we have to grab Sizzle. Well, it's whatever, really. Grab magic. We have to grab this either way, and then we can unlock this transfiguration. We see Ephraim, who also looks kind of cool, and I would not be against using. Hmm. I'm curious what his other higher forms look like. Like one of them is going to be Ifrit, obviously, but then the other ones are all nifty and stuff. Because he has like five. <laughs> like how many is it? Like one, two, three. They have seven forms. Every single one of them has seven forms. A little ridiculous, I have to say. But yeah. Let's go ahead and swap you back to Tama. I was just trying to get him to level 15 since I literally just caught him, but I wanted to be able to transform all of them on screen for you guys to look at. Um, what about their. We have to go back to the... I think I have to go back to the, um... Well, you know what? We can just use... the Teleport Stone, because we've never used it as of yet. And this seems like a decent opportunity. There we are. Back at the beginning. We can return to Ninewood Hills, and we can go look at their entries, their Pokedex entries, I guess. Go ahead and save as well. Okay, let's head on back. That took a very long time, if you couldn't tell by the huge level discrepancy. And running away doesn't ever seem to work in this game, for whatever reason. So you kind of just... If you get into a fight, you have to win, which means you always have to take the experience. Otherwise, I probably would have tried to run away relatively often, just to prevent having such a massive... ending up so massively overleveled, but... Game doesn't like that idea. Did we extra... Choco chick born with black feathers. Even their bones are black, just like a certain rare breed of chicken. For whatever reason, just their eyes are red. Allergies, perhaps. And the white chocobo. Pretty sure we did read this one. But we won't get a fat chocobo. 
for transfiguring him, though he, they had to save something for next time, meaning there's probably going to be a sequel to this game. There's Sylph. Did we actually read Sylph's entry? A tiny wind pixie that makes its home in forests and other places of natural beauty. The Sylphs are good friends of Seraphy. In fact, she sometimes meets up with them to play cards and gossip, so we should treat them with the same boundless effects and Seraphy expect. Yeah, we did. We did read that right at the beginning. There's Moo, Reaver Moo, Goblin. A mirage that travels in numbers has a nasty set of nasters, but rarely attacks by biting. After all, goblin punching is, a, is way, way more satisfying. A more powerful goblin equipped with sword and shield, the leader of, this, of the pack, so to speak. Not to be confused with the goblin gourd, which doesn't actually exist. You can't accuse these scamps of hitting below the belt because they go for your eyes instead. In untrue fact, they turn their helmet red by sheer willpower. Dread cat. A goblin commander capable of buffing all allies. That's why their armor is so shiny. Ha ha ha. Just kidding. That's not what buff means here. Or is it? We already saw him. A towering mirage made of rare metal, capable of taking a beating and strong as well. Mithril is harder than steel, so fist bumping is not recommended. Mini golem we should have already seen. Floating eye we should have already seen. Floating eyeball with a terrifyingly toothy grin. Imagine working, waking up to see this thing hovering over you, then again stare at it long enough and it's actually kind of cute. There's Frit. A tyke with a flare for flames, his horns get frequent compliments, wears a warm scarf despite basically being on fire. And there's Afrit. Kind of reminds me of, uh... What was its name? Uh, you know, the... Middle stage of Fennekin. Brexen, I want to say. A frit in the throes of adolescence. You can tell from the attitude of the, in the fact that he desperately, desperately needs a haircut. Let's just hope someone raises him right and teaches him the difference between Afrite and Afrong. <laughs> and there's Bob Liz. An adorable ice pixie with a knack for ice magic and a fondness for colder climes. Has no button nose, and those eyes of hers definitely aren't made of coal. And there's Miss Shiva. A bad blues that's grown into a chilly little prin ice princess. Her magic arsenal has expanded to a more than just ice attacks, but her vocabulary still needs some work. There's Zap, a weird, a wired tyke who's still learning to absorb lightning. His magic set remains limited. Don't confuse him with a certain colored mage. They're two different things. And there's Zaffir, a mirage that resembles a little boy. He's gotten the hang of summoning lightning with a snap of his fingers and looks good doing it, but you might not want to shake his hand. Hmm. We still need to catch a white knack, so technically we haven't seen this. A wolf-like mirage with sharp fangs and thick fur to protect against the cold. You could say that it has a knack for hunting, but please don't say that. And there's the black knack. A knack with a high resistance to fire. Even its teeth are like hot coals. You could probably grill a hamburger in there if you could just get it to keep its mouth open. Though we had read that one, I'm sure. And there's Behemoth. A hulking beast with large, powerful horns. Also a heavy mouth breather. But even heavier than that is its fearsome heavy counter, which is enough to make even the spooniest b bard sorry he swung his loot. And there's a Moogle. Apparent everybody's favorite fuzzball with the funny way of talking, Kupo. Attacks and heals using equally funny dances. Apparently they're willing to take just about any job if it means they get a role in the story. Kupirates. Marine Moogles with a penchant for piracy. They spend their weekends relaxing on the beach. Through the wonders of Dramorian magic, also known as budget limitations, they all share the same voice. Glow Moogle, a sparkling star of the Moogle world whose pom-pom halo glows like the sun. Also functions as a nightlight in a pinch, and it looks like a planet if you cover the bottom half with your hand. The Death Skull, an undead mirage that can unleash an entire spellbook's worth of magical attacks. Don't mistake it for a trick-or-treater. There's the Right Claw. Cockatrice, a bird with a poisonous beak that sometimes insta-KOs its prey, though we already read this. And then Valifor, Yuna's faithful friend and companion, so to speak. She soars through the air, wild and free. Raise your hand if you're feeling a wave of nostalgia right now. Hey, uh, speaking of nostalgia, did you know Final Fantasy X has been remastered in high def? I did know that, yes. And there's a dual lizard. There's the mimic. Quanchacho. Baby Paleberry. I wonder if I can evolve you yet, actually. There's the red bonnetberry. The ice bat we still haven't caught. Oh, well, actually, I suppose we can read this. A mirage that lives in cold climates wields ice magic in addition to its vampiric powers. Did you just notice the bat-shaped patch there on its face? It's a bat with a 
It's a bat within a bat. Batception. Don't attempt a, run, a home run with this bat, or you might just shatter it. There's the mini fan. And we had to unlock large flan in order to get thunder, in order to get uh, zapped, aka baby grandma. Highly resistant to physical attacks, so magic is your best bet. What flavor is a turquoise flan anyway? This thing looks like it's packed with artificial pigments and preserv preservatives. There's the shark wool. Here's normal Ifrit, normal Shiva, and a giant goblin. A giant goblin, but not a giant goblin. Carries a big sword that thankfully rarely hits its mark. His hobbies include eating, sleeping, eating, eating, sleeping, and well, you get the idea. That kind of makes me think that we probably can catch one, just because it's in here. And there's Sildra. Ferris's best friend in her ship's primary means of motion. Wait, does that mean her ship has uh, her ship's a sea chariot? Oh, and don't worry, there won't be any tearful beach goodbyes on this adventure. There's Grand Fenrir. A fearsome Fenrir that lives in Icicle Ridge, a.k.a. the Alphanac. Sadly, there's no such thing as a great Grand Fenrir yet, or a Grand Fenrir clock also yet, but progress is swift in Grimoire, so you never know. There's a Bamushian soldier. A soldier in the Bamushian army, they too can control mirages and use those mirages to attack the Federation's enemies. Many Grimorian Lilikin have been led to believe that the Federation will transform them into giants so they can fit in that armor. They must merely prove their souls worth choosing. The Bamushian Commander. An officer in the Bamushian army, naturally officers are more powerful than your average soldier. It's not possible for a Lilikin to become a giant. So then, so then what exactly is this? Federation Guard. These elite soldiers in the Bamushian army command mirages with exquisite tactical skill. Inside that armor lurks not a person, but a cunning monster from another world. And then there's Thomas' thing. Lon and Rain's trusty navigator. She's not a bunny rabbit, in case there's any confusion there. Claims to smell like rainbows. As it turns out, there's no way to prove her wrong. And there's Urugu, who I would like to pick up at some point, if at all possible. And a Choco Chick. We don't know any info on Chocobos, apparently. Hmm. I think the rest of this is just looping now. Alright, well, that's all of the new shenanigans that was in there. Though, while I'm thinking about it... Can we evolve you, Jack? Let's see, where's your transformation node? Transfiguration, level 21 or higher, so not quite yet. Though I suppose we can grab this, this... Ooh, we can do light damage now. That's useful, because we need light damage for certain things. You get a prism? We have access to this now. Though it does, still doesn't show up on here, interestingly. We have to actually turn him into a red bonnet berry, probably. But yeah, we have to get two more levels, and then we can do that. So that'll probably happen sometime soon. Do I care about this stuff? Ooh, that's pretty good. I actually do kind of want to get that. <coughs> I think we'll hold off, though. In case there's something slightly more important after he evolves or something similar. Tama has a lot of points, but we can't evolve him yet. Do I care about what's in this stuff? Not really. Getting the strength up and magic up wouldn't be bad, I suppose. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab those, just because. We're not going to grab the other stuff, though. We're just going to wait until we can un unlock this, whenever that may be. Then... I suppose we can go ahead and head in here and see if we can complete all of this silliness. Though we did spend 20 minutes just kind of doing random silliness, and there's a decent chance some people probably skipped this because they just didn't care. So I suppose I'll go ahead and end this one here. And we'll dedicate the next episode to completing all of these side mission things. 
Uh, if you liked this video and you would like to see more of them, do be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And uh, if you'd like to join in on the conversation, be sure to leave a comment down below. If you hated the video, you can dislike it. I don't know. That'd be kind of a scummy thing to do, though. <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.